All right, welcome everybody to our session. Uh, it's a pretty long title, so I will reserve that for the <laughs> PowerPoint slide that uh, has the title. But uh, basically is talking about opportunities that you have uh, at Cobble Community College, but also as a student, if you um, are continuing your education, let's say going to a four-year uh, university or whatever path you choose. So just know that these options are something that exists here and will exist in your future as you, uh, you know, get your training for your career or your degree. All right, I'm going to share a PowerPoint. Let me go ahead and do a share screen. All right, and let me know if there's any questions because I can't see you all. All right, so this, uh, as I said, the theme is on internships, apprenticeships, job shadowing, and work-based learning. Oh my, it's a lot, but uh, great stuff for you to take advantage of. So. The first thing we need to do is talk about the terminology slash the different options. What are they and what does that entail? So we're going to talk a little bit about each of those categories that are in the boxes. So first thing we're going to talk about is uh, job shadowing. So if you think about job shadowing, it is an opportunity to visit, tour, or shadow a professional like one-on-one -on -one in your program area uh, or desired career. So some folks are, let's say, in a specific program area and they want to shadow a professional in that area. Some other people want to explore a different career because they don't know which track they want to be in uh, right now or in the long term. So sometimes uh, they can, you know, set up a shadowing or through us set up a shadowing to visit that desired career to see if that's something that fits what you imagine in your head uh, and want to pursue uh, further education. So these job shadowing commitments as they're short term and it varies. It could be um, an hour long or it could be a few days long it just depends on whatever the uh, employer and yourself have come up with so that's sort of out of our control as far as the length of it but usually are in the shorter term and of course it's not very hands-on because a lot of you might not have enough education in your program of study yet uh, to be able to do that and of course there's a whole lot more involved with uh, other types of uh, what we call internships that will allow you to do more hands-on stuff but with job shadowing is mostly exploratory you're observing ask a lot of questions um, you know answering questions and that kind of stuff and so what do you get out of it well business tours you get to see what the businesses are like what is the product or service that they offer uh, you get to see what the workplace environment is like you get to see what the workplace expectations well see in here what the work workplace expectations are and of course, it's a great time for networking, you know, to get to know uh, folks that might be the ones hiring you in the future, or maybe giving um, a reference for you to get that first job in your program area. Okay. And the other option is informational interviews, which is very similar to job shadowing, but considering a couple of things, of course, we have uh, the issues with COVID. So a lot of companies are not open to folks coming from the outside at this point. Uh, but also we, um, how prevalent digital is as an option. So this is something that sometimes employers prefer to do. So this would be a one-on-one -on -one with a professional in your area, just like job shadowing, but it would be more of an online or on the phone uh, type of uh, um, encounter. So it would be you asking questions uh, and of course answering questions from the employer. So, you know, questions could vary about work duties uh, or like a lot of questions that we ask is like, what would the day look like um, for a professional in that area? And of course uh, you also, let's see, workplace, yeah, workplace environment questions, workplace expectations and that kind of stuff. Um, also you can ask about education certifications and all that, that kind of stuff, because again, sometimes you don't know uh, exactly what is the path to be in certain jobs in the in the industry that you want to be in in the area you want to be in so you can ask about what is the what are the pathways what are you looking for what are the things that I have to have so that's also good to discuss and uh, this um, you will also can discuss salary benefits and of course continue that networking uh, opportunity that we talked about earlier all right, so now we work to we work ourselves to uh, to the work based learning and apprenticeships side of things. So work based learning, it would be a semester long. Um, it, it's a course, so it's semester long. And what what you do is you go to work 
and you actually get college credit for that work. Uh, you actually also can get uh, a pay if that is within your agreement. And of course, if that's something that you have agreed with your employer and your employer is providing that. So it's not always paid, but it's a, a possibility. But you're getting experience and you're getting college credit at the same time. So it's a great opportunity for you to, to take advantage of. So this is on the job training. So again, hands on in the actual uh, workplace. So it's not so much in the classroom. Now you have to have a certain amount of classroom experience before you go out in the field and do this uh, work-based learning. Uh, this is offered through continuing education and curriculum, so it's pretty uh, flexible as far as whatever program you're in. Um, NWO, as a matter of fact, might be already in your program of study. Some of them are required. Some program of study, uh, study requires it. Some of them uh, just ask for you to, you know, give you that option as an elective. So that's something that you need to consider if you want to get experience. It's a great resume booster. And there's an asterisk for work-based learning and apprenticeship. So I just want to put a little caveat that uh, anybody can do a work-based learning, but it's not uh, transferable for a four-year, like a credit that's transferable for a four-year uh, university. And so a lot of uh, CTE programs, um, which uh, career and technical education programs, will actually, uh, it fits well because it will be part of that program. So uh, check it out, see if your program has work-based learning. Apprenticeships, it's different from work-based learning. Yes, you do go to work and yes, you do get some credit for that, but it's actually you work in school and you work at the workplace at the same time. So the length of it is actually your whole program of study. You have to, of course, register for an apprenticeship. And as you are going through your schooling, you're working at the same time. So it is hands-on, on-the-job learning from a, a master level supervisor. It could be for a continuing education program or curriculum program. And of course, you earn as you learn with incremental pay scale. So as you move on with your apprenticeship and as you get more experience, your pay goes up. So that's actually part of the uh, how the apprenticeship is, is set up. Uh, and so you're getting education, you're getting certifications and credentials that are recognized, industry recognized, so that's all great. Uh, you actually also get uh, sponsored, so you don't have to actually pay for your, your college, um, like a tuition and such. So it's a win-win-win for everybody. Uh, let's see, so some of the current programs that we have right now are construction trades, electrical line worker, industrial maintenance technician, and we will be adding soon the, bar, the biopharmaceutical technology and automotive programs to our apprenticeship program. So for more details, at the end, I'm gonna share with you my, my uh, email so that we can talk more about whatever these options that might interest you. And of course you have the uh, sort of loose term of, of internship. So that's just a general term that people use for any type of working within your program of study uh, for experience and of course to boost your resume. So some people call internships like the job shadowing or it could be the WBL or apprenticeships, but it's just sort of a, a encompasses everything kind of thing. So it's not really a um, formal program we have here, but we have those formal programs that you can uh, that you can apply for. So a lot of these internships, you can do an internship that is not related to anything I just said. These are usually set up individually or it could be set up through your program of study or college. So for example, Career Connections and myself can help you set up a, a internship if you're not interested or eligible for any of the other ones that the programs that I just talked about. Uh, these are, they could be short term, they could be long term and pay varies according to the internship agreement. So how do you prepare for, for these experiences? So of course you have to know your skill set. You have to know what your hard skills and soft skills that are applicable for what you're applying for. Uh, what are your relevant experiences? So you have to know your work history really well about what functions you had. And I know a lot of people say, well, I know what I did, but can you communicate that verbally? Can you put that on your resume? It's very, very important. And we actually had some uh, sessions on resume writing, which actually covers pretty well this area of how to communicate these things. Uh, let's see, uh, education. Do you have the education necessary, the degree or the training or certification? So if not, start planning on uh, where and when you're going to address these uh, gaps uh, for you to get to that next level where you want to go. Of course, networking is super important. So meeting professionals in that area uh, and of course, networking could happen in person or it could happen online. So just 
uh, use that to your advantage. So uh, look at the Chamber of Commerce, see what type of um, events they have or, you know, anything related to your field that you can go in person. Again, in times of COVID is a little uh, weird right now to, to do a lot of in-person um, activities or events, but you can do it online. So LinkedIn is great. Uh, check your, again, Chamber of Commerce is a great resource, uh, has it is a great resource and you can look at the website of the company or organization that you're looking into and of course start working on your resume so career connections we can help you um, to start or review your existing resume so that you can have a resume a good one for you to apply for jobs and of course we also uh, interview skills is something so important so you've got to sharpen that tool so that when you hopefully get that uh, call back for an interview you can you know uh, be in your top shape. Uh, I'm going to pause here and ask if you have any questions about the uh, WBL apprenticeships, uh, job shadowing interview, or informational interview, or internships before I move on. Any questions? None in the chat box. Okay. Sounds good. Hold on. So I heard somebody. On. Okay, go ahead. I don't hear anything. Yeah, I don't hear anything now. Okay. okay. So I'm going to move on and uh, we can actually do questions again a little bit later. So <clears throat> when it comes to hard and soft skills, uh, you have to know what skills you have and to be able to basically sell it to the employer uh, during the interview. So hopefully, and of course, on the resume as well, for you to be able to recognize those things and, and put it out there so folks can know a little bit more about your work history and, and what type of skills that you gain from that. So two categories are very important, hard skills and soft skills. So just so you know the difference, hard skills are skills that are easily uh, measure, uh, measurable and also specific to a task. So if you think about uh, like typing or making spreadsheets or taking vital signs, uh, so let's take taking vital signs as an example. That's specific to healthcare type of jobs, and uh, basically it's something that is uh, objective, right? You will have a polls, and you know you will have uh, different types of signs uh, that shows that the person's health. So it's pretty objective, pretty specific. So if you're a lawyer, not so much. You're not going to use that skill. If you are a chef, you're not going to use those skills, right? So again, those are hard skills. So we've got baking, machine operation, reading technical documents, and the list goes on and on and on. So for soft skills, the, the skill is not easily, easily measurable, and also they are highly transferable, meaning that you can do that skill in basically any job. So let's do that, uh, that test of the uh, naming some professions and see if you can apply these things. So we got a list of things here, so let's see. Time management. It doesn't matter if you're a lawyer, um, a chef, a doctor, a nurse, a teacher, doesn't matter. Student, you can use time management with any of those things, right? Any of those professions. So that's a soft skill. And soft skills are very, very important because uh, especially in school, we do a really good job teaching those hard skills, those job specific skills. But it's a lot harder to teach these life skills, these transferable skills, which are the soft skills. So a lot of the employers, when we ask, hey, how are we doing with our training? Were we doing a good job? They say, well, they come with the hard skills. Fantastic. But we need uh, you to work a lot on the soft skills as well, because that's something that we're missing uh, overall. And this is across the board. This is not uh, just our companies in Cobb Community College. This is across the board. So this is so, so important for not only to develop these skills, but also to recognize these skills and, you know, sell those on your, put them on your resume. Uh, make sure you speak up in your, your interview about those skills. Uh, don't be afraid of, of sounding like you're a show off by telling them about your skills. And if you don't tell them, they, they don't know that you have those. So you want to make sure that you put those on your resume and also bring them up on your uh, interview. Okay. Think about those. So I'm going to skip this, but here's a, a quick exercise. I usually have folks enter if this is a soft skill or hard skill, but I'll just zoom by them. So communication empathy would be a soft skill applicable to any job. Driving, 
specific to certain jobs. So it would be a hard skill, teamwork, soft skill, measuring pulse would be a hard skill, professional networking. So anybody can network and you should network. So that's a soft skill. Machine operation, hard skill, attention to de detail would be soft skill. Again, can be applicable to any job. Self-motivation, soft, creativity, soft, and creativity, again, is not reserved just for artists. Uh, so make sure anybody can be creative and should be creative in your workplace. Food preparation is a hard skill. Microsoft Office, hard skill. Customer service, soft skill. Uh, very important skill to have and definitely put that on your resume if that's something that you excel at. You do not have to work as a customer service representative in order to have customer service. So remember that anytime you're providing anything, a product or a service to anybody, you're providing customer service. It doesn't matter if it's your coworker or if it's a patient or if it is a client or a partner or whatever. Okay. It's customer service. So <clears throat> Some of the skills that uh, you want to apply, and again, this is applicable not only for the job, but also those opportunities that I mentioned, and that's why I'm bringing this up. You want to make sure to uh, hone on these top skills that are, are uh, very sought after by employers, okay? So communication skills, to be able to listen, uh, to, of course, negotiate nonverbal communication, like body language, facial expressions, all those are nonverbals. Uh, persuasion, presentation, public speaking, all that stuff is, is uh, very essential for, for any job and desirable too. So make sure if you don't have this to work on it, and if you do, put it on your resume, bring it up at the interview or the job shadowing or whatever. Critical thinking. So being able to think outside the box, being adaptable, creative, uh, being a critical observer, you know, uh, let's see, a desire to learn. All these things are, are uh, very sought after. So make sure that you're working on your critical thinking. And again, these are not easy to do. Uh, it's not like learning Microsoft Excel, but guess what? It is a skill, so you can actually learn it. Just do a little research and practice it every day until you get, you know, you become a master at it. Leadership is something else that is very sought after by uh, employers. So conflict management is included in leadership, um, you know, deal making, decision making, delegating, uh, dispute uh, <laughs> resolution, which is really, really good uh, to have. And this does not mean um, not all conflict is bad, by the way. Uh, a little bit of creative tension is not a bad thing. We have a diversity of thought and sometimes that creates a little bit of, of conflict. And again, that's not always negative. It just depends on how it's handled and the outcome. So, hey, Jenny. Sarah, do we have a question? Go ahead. Yeah, um, Leslie said she's having some trouble hearing you. Um, are you having trouble hearing me, Sarah? I, I mean, I can hear you, but um, I'm, yeah. Okay, I'll put the microphone a little bit closer. Is this any better? It's louder, mm -hmm. so. Okay, all right. So I will continue on if you can hear me. So having a positive attitude is also something very, very important. So make sure to you know bring that that sense of positive attitude that is is genuine and not like just fake happiness. That's that's not what they're asking for. So uh, you know working on your confidence level is very, very important. Being cooperative, courteous, energetic, enthusiastic, friendly, and so forth. So make sure that you create that positive attitude, not only for yourself, but also foster that in the workplace, regardless if it is a, a you know, a short term or longer term uh, employment or job shadowing or whatever you're doing with the employer. Teamwork, very, very important to be able to accept feedback, to collaborate, uh, provide customer service. I think I heard another, is there another question? You're, you're good. Okay. And being empathetic, uh, you know, all those things are very, very important. Work ethic. So show that you have work ethic. You know, be attentive. Uh, ethics is very, very important. So business ethics, be dedicated, dependable, flexible, um, you know, persistent and, you know, punctual and all that good stuff. And of course, some of the workplace expectations that you'll have. And again, any of these programs that we do, we always uh, train our students because we want to make sure that they represent us well and represent yourself well. Because again, when you go out there, a lot of people think that you're just representing yourself, but it's not true. You're representing uh, us as a college because we are the liaison. We're the ones who are, are talking to these uh, employers most of the time. 
and we want to make sure that you go out there and represent us very, very well so that we can continue these partnerships and have students you know, in the future work at these places or do a job shadow or WBL or apprenticeship and whatever um, the option that you have picked. So workplace expectation is very important. So plan ahead when you're going whatever it is. Uh, attendance is very important, so show up when you need to show up. Communication, and again, it might be in person, phone, email, make sure you communicate appropriately and clearly. And a lot of people communicate well verbally, but when it comes to emails or, you know, uh, a lot of people send text type um, language, which is not appropriate for a professional setting. Attire, so make sure you plan in advance or know in advance and plan in advance what is the appropriate attire for whatever the opportunity that you're selecting. It could be a job shadowing. Uh, like, for example, if you're going to healthcare and you don't have scrubs, then ask, know in advance, what is the appropriate attire for that type of, of um, opportunity that you're, you're taking advantage of, okay? And, of course, that also includes things like maybe not having uh, a lot of accessories such as piercings, necklaces, you know, uh, perfumes and colognes, that could be a health hazard. Uh, some folks have allergies, okay? And so here are some examples of professional dress, so for office type and executive type jobs. So office workers, uh, this is more business casual. For laborers, as comfort and safety is very important, so sometimes it's not a question of wearing your nicest clothes, but wearing things that fit correctly and allow you to let not get overheated. And of course, safety is very, very, very important. Uh, workplace conduct, this is something that we'll do more training about, so I'm gonna just sort of zoom past this. Privacy and confidentiality, this is so, so important. It does not matter the uh, industry that you're in, privacy and confidentiality is super important, especially when dealing with uh, personal information of your clients. Uh, or if you're visiting uh, the clients of the business, you might see things um, that you shall not be uh, sharing because, again, it's uh, something that should be kept private and confidential, okay? And especially if you are working uh, in healthcare, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of um, waivers and things that you have to sign um, to be compliant, and you are legally liable to keep that information you know, to yourself and not share because of the, the confidentiality agreement that you'll most likely sign. Travel and transportation, so plan ahead uh, how you're getting to and from and uh, how long it takes to go to the place for job shadowing or you know employment or whatever it is, so plan ahead. Be committed, so make sure, again, you're representing yourself and us, so make sure that you are committed whenever you uh, show interest in doing any of those opportunities that I mentioned earlier, okay? So look the employer in the eye, uh, have a nice firm handshake, um, ask meaningful questions to the employer. A lot of those menial questions, you can kind of answer that with a quick uh, Google search or going to the website of the uh, company, so make sure to do that. Um, think about those questions beforehand, okay? Uh, do prior research always, so go to their About Us page, go to their website and see what they're all about, what product they make and or service, and educate yourself about that. Be prepared to discuss what your career goals are, so what are you doing in the next five years? What are you doing to prepare to be in that career field, okay? And uh, ask for business cards. Oh, keep your phone shut shut down, like turn it off, uh, because you don't want to be answering to text messages and phone calls and get interrupted while you're doing these experiences. And of course, respect people's time. Body language is very important. You can tell that uh, if you were sitting uh, at the waiting room of a company before you did your job shadowing or, or interview or whatever, the person that creates the best uh, impression is number four. All the other ones, they look too uh, busy uh, to to let's let's put it this way they're not appreciating these the circumstances of having the doors open for them to experience something that could be life or career changing okay and of course handshake we talked about that nice firm handshake not a crusher but no, also not a soft hand you gotta 
give a little squeeze, show confidence, you know, show that you are uh, respect the person that is across from you. So I'm going to leave this up. You can see Career Connections email and you can see my, my email. So if you have any questions about uh, resumes, interview skills, job searching, that kind of stuff, you can get in touch with uh, Career Connections. If you have uh, any questions about the WBL, work-based learning apprenticeships or job shadowing, please contact me. Um, if you contact uh, any of us, um, we will let the other one know if it involves uh, that person. There is a misspelling right here. I'm going to have to fix that, but it's Career Connections, okay? 